Hello everyone, welcome to the lesson. In this lesson, we're going to look at a question on cumulative frequency curve, also known as the Ojave curve. And to do this, we're going to solve a question in the year 2019, that is KCC paper 2. So here is the question. So let us uh, go through the question, reading through it. Uh, so the question reads, the amount of money contributed by students during a fundraising for a needy student or shown in the table below so there is uh, the column of the row for the amount 300 to 400 401 to 500 and so on so then you have the number of students who contributed or the amounts so the first question on the grid provided draw an ogive curve to represent the data on the grid provided, draw an ogive curve to represent the data. The ogive curve, as I've said, it has another name, the cumulative frequency curve. Now to draw this, there's something that you need to know. How do you draw an ogive curve? We do plot the cumulative cumulative right this one. So we, we plot cumulative frequency cumulative frequency against against the upper class limits so this means that on the y-axis we shall plot the cumulative frequency in this case the cumulative frequency will represent the number of students in the y-axis then the x-axis we shall um, indicate the amount the amount contributed and we're going to use uh, the upper class limits of those amounts the upper class limits so this is how we're supposed to do it now we need now to go to the table as you can see i have some spaces there one part I will have to fill uh, cumulative frequency then the other one the upper class limits so the cumulative frequency is how we do it we get to 2 plus 10 you get 12 12 plus 12 you get 24 24 plus 14 you get 38 38 plus 7 you get 45 45 plus 3 you get 48 then 48 plus 2 you get 50 that is how we get uh, cumulative frequency now let's go to the upper class limits the upper class limit of course um for this class 300 to 400 we shall have um 405 400.5 uh, then from there this one will be 500 Point five. Then here we have six hundred point five. Then we have seven hundred point five in that class. Then eight hundred point five. This one is a nine hundred point five, and then one thousand point five. Those are the upper class limits of each of those classes. So after getting that, now we go to the graph and plot. And draw the ogive curve now after using the cumulative frequency and also the upper class limits this is what you should have this is the graph that you obtain uh, let me just take you through the graph uh, to see what I did to get all these now for the scale uh, in the y-axis I decided to use um, a scale of one centimeter to represent five students so two centimeters will represent 10 students then for the x-axis i said to use um to start with the lowest limit 300.5 uh, then all the others are upper limits 400.5 and so on so for at every interval of two centimeters i have 100 so one centimeter represents around 50 that is 50 so that is the scale then i plotted all the points using the table here y-axis cumulative frequency then for the x-axis upper class limit so I was able to 
use those details in order to obtain what you can see here. So one important thing uh, when it comes to plotting, you need to be very accurate. I did all the plotting and um, as you can see, uh, here are the points that I used. These are point there, the first one, there are these points. These are the points that I plotted. I know when it comes to plotting, you don't have problem with that. We've done that in a previous part. So I plotted and then I drew a smooth curve. The OJV curve is uh, what you can see here. Now, after drawing that, uh, I think now we should go to the questions. Use the graph, that is part B. Use the graph to estimate the median. Use the graph to estimate the median. Now, from the graph, how do we get the median? The first thing is to know how to identify the median. Now, median, which is also denoted as Q2, is obtained by getting the position of the median the position of the median will be half multiplied by the total frequency now when you go to the table here total frequency refers to the number total number of students for this data given here and the total number of students which is the total frequency is 50. so median position is obtained by taking a half multiplied by 50. So the position of the median will be the 25th. That is the 25th student is the one that is going to give the median for this data. So what we do now, after obtaining 25, that is 25th position, go to the graph. I've already done this, just a matter of explanation. So on the number of students that is a cumulative frequency, let us go to 25. 25th student is located here between 20 and 30. Draw a straight line. Uh, from this 25 direct up to the point where it touches the cumulative frequency curve then at this point it touches drop down straight so the figure that you read here is the solution now it's good to note the scale of these uh, x-axis you can see two centimeters represent um, 100 so therefore that is um, one small square will therefore represent 10 and you can see this one is just not a full square it's just uh, after 600.5 this is just the middle of this square so half of that small square will be 5 so we shall take 600.5 plus 5 since this one is not a full square so 600.5 so this will be 600.5 then plus 5 since one small square represents 10 this one will give uh, 605.5 as the median that is the median now the next uh, question is on the next question is on the quartile deviation the quartile deviation again we need to ask ourselves how do we get the quartile deviation how do we obtain quartile deviation that is very important now, quartile deviation is obtained by taking Q3 and subtract Q, Q1 divided by 2. The other name for quartile deviation is semi-interquartile range. So, direct to that. Now, start by writing this. That quartile deviation is also referred to as semi-interquartile range which is obtained by half of Q3 subtract Q1. That is how we get it. Now, what is Q3? Q3 is, is the upper quartile. This is the upper quartile. Q1 is the lower quartile. Very important to note that. Very important note that q1 is the lower quartile how do we get the upper quartile upper quartile is obtained by that is a q3 by taking three quarters of the total frequency you've already seen that total frequency is 50 so this will be 3 over 4 multiplied by 50 this will give the position 
of the upper quartile and when you work out this we get this one is 37.5 position that will give q3 the position so we go to the graph uh, we go to the graph uh, where do we find uh, 37.5 that 7.5 is here 35 the receive the 7.5 is here so draw a straight line a horizontal line from the 7.5 up to the point where it touches the cumulative frequency curve drop down straight down and then read this value this will be the upper quartile so when you look at this it is uh, at the middle of this square so it is not exactly 700.5 just the half of a square and you've noted that one small square is five so to get this point since it is not a up to 700.5 shall take a 700.5 subtract 5 700.5 so this would be given by 700.5 subtract 5 and this will give um, 695.5 that is the upper quartile now we can go to the lower quartile the lower quartile is a quarter of the total frequency that is the position that is how we get the position of the lower quartile so a quarter multiply by total frequency this will give the 12.5 position that is the position of the lower quartile direct to the graph the y-axis where you have the number of students let's go to 12.5 12.5 is here so draw a straight line from 12.5 very straight line up to point where it touches the curve then drop down straight the figure that you read here is the one that gives the lower quartile so we read this value here you can see that this is a 500.5 then in the middle of that square again so we said one small square is 10 so half of this square will be 5 so we have to add 500.5 plus 5 500.5.5 so this one 500.5 plus 5 and this will give 505.5 that is the lower quartile now quartile deviation now is obtained by q3 which is 695.5 subtract 505.5 that is the lower quartile divided by 2 that is what is going to give the quartile deviation or the semi interquartile range working out this on the calculator 695.5 subtract 505.5 this will give 95 so 95 is the quartile deviation we can proceed to the next question the percentage number of students who contributed at least 750.5 then percentage number of students who contributed at least 750.5 or 50 cents now we need to go to the graph and um, we go straight where we have 750 and 0.5 and 50 cents this is where it is it is it is here you can see it here is here so what we need to do now is to simply draw a straight line up from that uh, point 750.5 up to the point where it touches the curve then straight to the left and then you notice that this is uh, where we have the 42nd student so that means uh, the number of students who contributed um, 700 uh, and 50.5 and above begins from 42nd read the value here 42nd student up to the 50th student from 42nd student so we've drawn from 750.5 draw a straight line to where it touches the curve then to the left so you notice that this one uh, is a student who uh, you need to be very keen so from 42nd student to the 50th student those are the ones who contributed at least 5750.5 uh, that is the amount at least means uh, 750.5 and above so how many students are these you need to be very careful when you um identify how many students are these from 42nd student to 50th student 
uh, when you're counting the number of students, you don't need to. If you take 50, subtract 42, you get 8, which is wrong. You don't have included the 42nd student. So from the 42nd student, if you count the number of students manually, 42nd student, 43rd, 44th, up to uh, 50, you'll get this will be 9. There will be 9 um, students. So you just simply take uh, 50, subtract uh, 42, you get 8. And then since you want to include um, the 42nd student where you started, you get 9. So 9 students are the one who contributed uh, 750.5. Now, the question is percentage. The percentage of these students is 9 out of the total number of students multiplied by 100. That is how we get the percentage. 9 students out of the total multiplied by 100. And this one will give um, 18 percent so that is um, simply how you're supposed to solve that question thank you so much